right, welcome everyone to a new episode of the Full Body Science Applied series. In this video, we're gonna be hitting the third full body workout on our new five day per week high frequency split. And as always, if this split just looks totally crazy to you, make sure you check out my Science Explained video on high frequency training first for some more background on that. And today, even though we are hitting our full body, we're gonna emphasize the back, so the lats and the traps, by hitting them first in the workout and with slightly more volume. So let's just jump right into it. Up first, we're doing three sets of six reps on the weighted pull-up to an RPE of eight. Now, this is our third day in a row hitting the back in some capacity. So for the first week or two, it is normal if you're feeling a bit more fatigued or sore at this point. So just make sure you're doing plenty of warm-up before you jump into your working sets. I like to do a nice and controlled set of six with just body weight or even some assistance first to really lock in my technique and mind-muscle connection. Then I'll do another warm up set for four or five reps to get acclimated to having some weight added, and then jump into my three working sets from there. And again, with pull ups in particular, you really want to focus on your lifting tempo. So rep six should look about the same as rep one, meaning the positive or negative shouldn't get quicker as you fatigue. And if you can't complete all six reps with consistent form, maybe that's an indication that you should drop the weight back a bit for the next set. Now, one thing I've been doing on this program so far is stretching my lats in between sets. Now, I discussed the potential hypertrophic benefits of interset stretching in another video where I covered a 2019 study showing that when subjects were given the same full body training program done twice per week, the group that stretched for 30 seconds in between sets saw just about 50% more muscle growth across the four muscles they measured. However, when looking at the individual results, the difference only reached significance for the quads and when all the muscles were pooled together. Now, since then, my good friend Chris Barakat has conducted a new study in his lab, which hasn't been published yet, but might add further support to this being worth giving a shot. So for these, I usually hold the stretch for 20 to 30 seconds or so, and at about a seven out of 10 intensity. So they should be a deep stretch, but not actually painful. And as I see it, interset stretching is one of those things that either has a slightly positive or a neutral effect, as long as they aren't being held for too long. So since you've got a rest between sets anyway, you might as well stretch the muscle out a bit, and at worst, it'll just help improve the pump. Okay, up next, we're doing three sets of 10 reps on the humble row to an RPE of seven or eight. And the reason that the RPE is a bit lower here is that I really wanna focus on execution over weight for this exercise. That is the whole point of this exercise, to limit momentum in cheating. And if you go too close to failure on any row, I find you simply start swinging or pulling with your arms more, which is okay in some contexts, but not our purpose here. So I think I saw this exercise first on Matt Jansen's Instagram, and my friend Phil Snellgrove was the first person I heard call it a humble row, because it really does humble the amount of weight that you can use. So to make the movement more mid-trap and rear delt dominant, we wanna emphasize transverse shoulder abduction by thinking about driving our elbows straight out to the sides. And as a word of warning, you're gonna to wanna to use either a towel or some knee sleeves to give you some cushioning on the edge of the bench. And you'll wanna position the height of the bench so your torso is about parallel with the floor. Okay, after that, we're moving on to three sets of 15 on the leg press. So if you guys remember on day one, our squats were much more heavily loaded and we were focusing more on using external cueing to help generate max strength output. Today, we're doing pretty much the opposite, using lighter weight for higher reps and focusing on feeling our quads contract as we move the weight. So I tend to not make higher rep work like this the bread and butter of my program, but I still think it does a couple useful things. For one, it's great for building work capacity. If you can learn to tolerate and recover from a set of 15, lower rep sets will simply feel easier for you in the future. You'll essentially be teaching your muscle to respond to whatever you throw at it. Also, while there doesn't seem to be any scientific consensus on how much metabolic stress really matters for hypertrophy, most of the literature I've seen still points to it as being a contributing factor for growth, even if mechanical tension is the main driver. So there are a couple things you can do here as far as cueing goes. If you wanna make it more quad dominant, I try to keep a more constant tension approach without locking the knees at the top, and I'll place my feet a little lower on the platform. If you wanna make it more glute dominant, take a slightly wider stance, place your feet a bit higher, and flare your toes out a bit more. Now, personally, I like to use these to burn the quads out a bit more. So the next time you try these, go all the way to 15 reps without pausing or locking your knees out. Just use smooth, consistent reps, and I guarantee you'll feel a huge difference in your quads. All right, next we're hitting four sets of eight reps on the standing calf raise. Now these don't have to be done standing. The most important thing is just that you have a straight leg. So if you want, you can easily do these as supersets with the leg press. So just do toe presses in between sets of leg press. But since I'm not really limited on time myself, I prefer to do them on a separate machine. And lately I've been putting calves more in the middle of the workout simply because if I leave them until the very end, I'm just that much more tempted to skip them. So if you have a history of skipping calves, try keeping yourself accountable by sticking them more in the middle of your workout. 
And again, remember from Technique Tuesday, you wanna keep your knees locked by flexing your quads and focus on pausing at the bottom of each and every rep to prevent the highly elastic Achilles tendon from taking over. After that, we're moving on to three sets of 10 reps on the cable upright row using the rope. And this is another example of a very time efficient exercise that's gonna target several different muscles for a very small recovery demand. So here we're hitting the side delts through shoulder abduction, while at the same time hitting the upper traps through scapular elevation and upward rotation. So rather than programming, say, a lateral raise and a shrug, we can pretty much knock off two muscles with a solid stimulus from one exercise. Now, I know a few of my subscribers are still wary of this exercise, but a while back, I spoke with Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, who's published actual research in this area, and he explained that most of the concerns about the upright row are just overblown. And we reviewed the literature, and really our conclusion based on it was that if you're not going above 90 degrees, 80 to 90 degrees, then there's the, the risk is very limited. Can I say that no one's going to get impingement from that? Is certain people are going to have uh, certain genetics where it might hurt, but uh, it's possible. I would say that uh, the evidence does not support what those people are saying. So for a good mix of side delts and traps, I like to think about initiating the movement by sweeping the weight out, almost as if doing a lateral raise, while trying to pull the rope apart and then you wanna squeeze the traps up at the top more like a shrug. So I like to think of these as sort of like a lateral raise shrug hybrid more than an actual upright row per se. Okay, and we're gonna round out this workout with some bicep work. So here we're doing three sets of 10 on the hammer curl. Now biomechanically, we know that hammer curls are great for targeting the brachioradialis of the forearm because it sits on the back of the forearm, meaning it's better positioned in the line of pull of the weight with a neutral or pronated wrist position. Also, even though people think of the hammer curl as a brachialis and brachioradialis exercise, there is EMG evidence showing that the biceps are in fact very active on the hammer curl as well, with the reverse or palms down grip being the only hand position that's really inferior for the biceps. So I really like the hammer curl because it's gonna get a very nice mix of forearms, brachialis, and biceps, and should be very good at beefing up the whole back of the arm. And one thing I always do on hammer curls is make sure that I'm gripping the dumbbell in the middle of the handle, rather than letting the top head of the dumbbell rest passively against my hand, which can take some of the forearm involvement out of the movement. And lastly, again, we're gonna take these sets to failure just because our heavy back work is done for the day. So I don't think we need to worry too much about recovery interference here at the end of the workout. Also with the biceps, I do find that RPE can be a bit tough to gauge because even just a little bit of cheating can help you crank out those extra few reps. So lately I've just been keeping it simple and saying, okay, let's just go beast mode with the bicep work while obviously making sure that form is still reasonably intact, but I'm not holding back too much either. And that's all that I have for this workout, guys. I hope you are all enjoying the series so far. I've got another two workouts left to do to complete this five-part video series. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. Also, I'll put a button over here to my new 10-week, three-block high-frequency full-body program in case you'd like to have all this information put into one place that you can just go into the gym and follow through with. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys all here in the next one.